did that happen? Because I, I know you mentioned holding it for a couple of years. Obviously, like I mentioned at the start, selling websites is buying and selling is quite hot at the moment. I'm wondering if yep. that helped fund like the increase that you got, like you said, selling at W or a double for double the value, yeah. or it was you adding the value into the site and then the way that you remarketed it. I'm just wondering where that value was it's created. Definitely increasing the, the the amount of money it was producing, so that increases the asset value. So yeah. um, in most sites out there, if they're not run by a person who understands internet marketing, they're not going to inherently know how to improve the performance of a website. So um, in this case, uh, the advertising was Google AdSense and I think yeah. one sponsor, maybe two, who were paying a monthly fee to put a banner on the site. So I had a, a guy I was um, basically, I wasn't partnering with him, but he was put in charge of these websites and I'd pay him a percentage of the money generated from the advertising and the, the yeah. AdSense. So it was in his onus, if he increased the advertising performance, he got paid more from that turnaround and it took the, the management role off my hands. So what we did was fairly simple. We bought a site and then we said, okay, let's go do some Googling and find any potential sponsors. And usually, you know, there's other sites out there that are retailers of products. In this case, mm -hmm. miniature bikes. There were other websites selling mini bike products. So all we did was um, went and sent them an email saying, hey, we've got this website. It gets this much traffic. Which is the type of audience you want? We've got two more banner positions available. It's first come, first served. It's 100 bucks a month, whatever it was. And uh, we you know, increased the amount of inventory we could sell, and we increased the amount of um, sponsors we had. So that immediately had a bottom line effect without doing anything else, because they were just trying, you know, paying money to access the existing audience that was already there. Yeah. So that's, that's a simple thing to do, just try and find more sponsors, and also add more places to sponsor your site. So I can't remember the specifics, but uh, when we had it, it probably had a banner in the top somewhere, and maybe one in the footer. We added a right sidebar, we added some text links, maybe we added yeah. some banners in between posts. So we just increased the inventory, so we had more to sell to more sponsors. So. Um, you know, you might get a bit of complaining from the community, but usually they adapt pretty quickly. And if the sponsors are on target, they don't mind because they get exposed to uh, you know places where they can buy what they're there for anyway. Which in this case was miniature bike products. So that worked well. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's a couple of things there. Like both examples that you were talking about there, the common element that seemed to rise to the top for me was the idea that you're making these check move theories, um, the check, or you're making check moves where you're actually getting out there and making an offer to someone. It's rare for people, as simple as it is, to get out there and send an email to someone and say, here's an offer, apart from spammers, spammers are getting out there yep, and sending yep. it, but to do it in a classy way and targeting to the individual and saying, hey, I know you're interested in this particular niche, yep. I have a website, here's what I have to offer you, that that in itself is... Very targeted. Yeah, yeah very targeted. and I think that's... that's creates the opportunity there. The good thing about flipping websites is uh, I suppose it's like real estate market in that it's an illiquid market when I compare it to the stock market. Stock market has a market that's traded and the, the buy and sell prices are very much regulated and it's a lot more liquid because you've got a lot more buyers and sellers so the spread's a lot lot tighter but yep. when you look at um, an illiquid market real estate is a good example or even websites websites are even less uh, known and the industry is still so mm. young in its mm. infancy there's a lot of opportunity there I'm wondering have you ever thought about the idea of maybe even approaching websites that aren't listing on flipper and saying hey I want to buy this particular site and then just reselling them straight yep. on flipper um, I mean, I've never, like, I, yeah, yeah. I got out of buying and selling websites a couple of years ago to focus on my core blogging business. Yeah, um, yeah. But when I was doing this, certainly, in fact, this buying and selling websites was never a full-time thing for me. It was it was always a part-time thing. I reinvested profits from blogging mm. from my, my other business into buying uh, these acquisitions. And at the time, I think my goal was to just say, well, you know, if I can buy a website and make $1,000 a month from it, let's have 10, let's have 20, you know, why not? I, didn't, I, I ended up not chasing that goal to the very end because I realized every time I bought a new website, I was, I was almost like starting a new business in a lot of ways. So it's, it's, mm. you basically create um, not necessarily a lot of labor. I was good with having someone help me manage the sites. It was more a case of mind share. I had to think about owning these sites and uh, yeah. that took a bit of, I like, created stress, simply put, and I wasn't after much more stress. So, you know, in the course of my website flipping experiences, I um, bought and sold, I guess, three packages, so in yeah, case yeah. of buying a site, building it up and selling it, plus I had my two of my own creations, so websites I built up from scratch myself 
and then sold. So I did about five or six deals in, in the time frame that I was yeah. doing this. And to answer your question before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're talking from the you know uh, from the first time I built the website, which would have been about you know, 1999, 2000, up to maybe 2006, 2007. When was the last time I sold a website and got? Yeah. I basically liquidated all my assets beyond my core blogging business, and uh, you know it, it was. I, I don't think it was a case of it suddenly becoming more popular to buy and sell websites. It was um, you know Flipper site point helped. Um, mm -hmm. it, it it found me places that I could uh, buy sites from. Most of the time when I sold sites, though, I didn't go back to site point. I actually. Uh, would sell them either through the contacts I had. A good thing mm. about being a, a, a person in the make money online space as a, a teacher and a writer in that area, you know other people who are into internet marketing. So I could yeah. come to someone like David and say, you know anyone who wants to buy a miniature bike site, it makes $2,000 a month, you know, you got any person who might be keen on taking it over and eventually you find a buyer just yeah. by contacts. <laughs>